At will employment cuts both ways, sister. A few years ago, my husband was laid off at the start of summer. I had a part-time gig as a teacher, but it didn't come with benefits. I had to take a job, any job, to provide health insurance, Merca, while hubby looked for a new gig. I got a job as a teller at a bank. I tried, but was new to keeping a till, so a few times a week, my register wouldn't balance. Never very much money. Under a few dollars. But the whole staff had to stay late until we straightened it out. I felt horrible for the rest of the staff. As if that shame wasn't bad enough, my supervisor, Mel, would remind me that I worked at will and they could fire me at any time. Our family's health insurance going up in smoke was terrifying to me. Sometimes it was hard to hold back tears. I got better as the summer went on, but every few weeks, if I would make a mistake, Mel would smile as she warned me that you can be fired for no cause and you'd have to leave immediately. It was so fantastically over the top. At one point, I pointed out that constant threats didn't create a healthy environment. Her smile only broadened. It goes both ways. You can quit at any time, you know. When the school year started in the fall, I needed to take my daughter to tour her new school for her first day. I asked to take my lunch in the afternoon, so I could help my daughter. Though they approved it, when it came time for my lunch, they insisted I work through my lunch because they were being slammed. By then, Hubs had found a job with insurance and, even better, I'd been offered more hours teaching, though still not full time. It was enough. The next day I practically floated into the bank. I waited until 10 a.m., then told Mel I needed to talk with her. She replied that she was very busy and it would have to wait until after we closed. Oh, I won't be here then, I said. She looked like I'd smacked her with a brick. What? I smiled. Remember that I needed to bring my daughter to her new school yesterday? You wouldn't let me do that, so I'm doing it this afternoon. She didn't get it at all. You can't just take an hour off when you... I had to interrupt. I'm not taking an hour off. I'm leaving. For good. At noon. You kept reminding me that I work at will. Thanks for those reminders. I'm leaving for good in two hours. While Mel fumed, I waited on customers. I practically sang my greetings to them and was so ducking cheerful, customers kept asking me why I was so happy. I was delighted to tell them, because I'm leaving forever at noon. After a half hour of that, Mel thought I should just go right away. And I did. I ducking skipped right out the door, then gave Mel a very elaborate curtsy at the door. Smile. Now to the comments. I wish corporate and HR would look into why so many employees are leaving. But we had the same thing where I worked and both hid their heads in the sand. I wish corporate and HR would look into why so many employees are leaving. But we had the same thing where I worked and both hid their heads in the sand. Sadly, it's become a fact of life that there will always be attrition rates. They just budget for it, rather than making actual changes that'll make the life of their employees better. Then there's the fact that it's easier to pay one or two dedicated trainers a higher salary for years than it would be to pay dozens of people progressively higher salaries and benefits. I manage a medium-sized sales organization. My org has one of the lowest attrition rates and one of the highest achievement to goal rates in our company. On multiple occasions, higher-ups and other org leaders have asked, how can I replicate this? Be clear what their goals are. We're a sales organization, we hit slash exceed our sales numbers. I don't care if they are in the office 8 to 2, if the work gets done it gets done. Treat people well. Apparently easier said than done for some folks. Pay reasonably well. We don't have to be top in the industry, but we definitely can't cheap out here. Some, but not all, of them hear the last one and go, but my bonus is tied to profitability. So do your job and manage the other expenses and hit slash exceed metrics to justify more costs. It can really be that simple straightforward. If it were simple, and repetitive, a machine would do it for cheaper. I read a quote somewhere about how you only truly get to know someone's character once they think they have enough power over you that they can do anything they want with no consequences. Mel did not fear being fired, and she took someone who was vulnerable and kept her in a constant state of fear. Why would someone do that?
because for some people, the tiniest bit of power goes to their head. Being able to fire someone is a moderate amount of power and someone like Mel probably ate it up. Power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Love it. I once quit a job on a spot, and had the manager say it is customary to give two weeks notice. I said if you decided to let me go, would you have given me two weeks warning? He didn't have an answer, so I walked right out. Good one. I might have used so it's a custom not a rule? I, literally, call it a professional courtesy. Had a manager at ATT start every conversation with me with the thinly veiled threat now I know you need this job because I wouldn't like to customers or commit fraud to keep her numbers up. She couldn't threaten my job outright because it was union. After three months of it I had decided it was enough and started job hunting. Found a government IT internship that has since evolved into a full-blown career, about two months into my search. As soon as I had confirmation that I got that paid internship, I waited. The next time Crystal said the magic words now, Bailey, I know you need this job. And I piped up you know what? I don't need this job. Consider this my two weeks. Felt like a couple tons of bricks were lifted from my very soul. I now have a need to see the face they had right then. Unless you happen to film the interaction, it will sadly remain unfulfilled. Can you at least relay their reaction in words? Yeah, Crystal's eyes went wide, her stupidly long hot pink acrylic nails dug into her leg, and she paused. She eventually said well, alright then, I hate to lose you I replied I hate having my job constantly threatened. She didn't talk to me basically at all for the last two weeks I was there. In hindsight, I should have buried her, she did a lot of shady stuff with time cards, requests off, and again outright fraud but it would have ended up shooting all my co-workers, several of whom I did like, firmly in the leg as well. Ultimately, her store got closed later on down the line and now she's a manager of a third-party ATT store, forever crushing her ambitions of running a large store or becoming a district manager. So, there's some consolation. I'm picturing the skipping and curtsy at the door, and smiling gigantically for you. My current supervisor keeps telling us that we are free to leave at any time, as well. Like that's going to motivate us to want to stay at a job with no appreciation and not nearly enough pay, at a company that gives raises once every two years, in January, usually. Except it's almost April and no one's gotten their raises yet, if you're lucky. And there's never any time for cross-training, or external training unless you're his favorite, which I most certainly am not. I'm a little bitter. And currently actively looking for a better job. They're not even giving you a but the economy. Excuse for no raises? Eck, they have gotten lazy. They definitely deserve no notice when you find a new job. The excuse for no raise yet this year is twofold. We were being shopped around to be purchased, and the head of our HR department was really busy, and hadn't gotten around to it yet. He promises that they'll be done by the end of this month. Sure. I'll believe it when I see it. I'm currently paid $5 an hour less than the only other person in the company with my title who has less experience than me in the specifics of our job, and absolutely no ducking skills, and is dumber than a rock. While Mel fumed, I waited on customers. I practically sang my greetings to them and was so ducking cheerful, customers kept asking me why I was so happy. I was delighted to tell them, because I'm leaving forever at noon. I know that feeling. I did something similar at my first job. Teammates complained I was gloomy for some time. I was gloomy because the job was not at all what was presented to me during interviews. Every proposal I made to make things better were always rejected by my superiors, and they were always telling me how I should do my job instead. Employment contracts are a bit different here. You can be a subcontractor, have a limited duration contract for up to six months, or an unlimited contract. The latter comes with quite some benefits and employee protection. If you want to buy a house you need that or you can't get a mortgage. As an engineer, these come with a four months trial period, that can be extended once. This company policy was to extend it every time. That kind of company always do this, it is usually called human meat traders. It really fits. Anyway, one day the teammates heard a manager arguing, then I came in the open space, with a bright smile on my face, and another couple managers arguing loudly too. T. 
seemed mates asked what happened. I told them I just handed my resignation and would leave at the end of the week, since I was still on my trial period. They, on the other hand, were past it, so they'd have at least a month to wait. Then it all happened pretty quick. The five of them considered the work I was doing, that they would have to do now, the next deadline, and all went to hand their resignation to. Needless to say, there was a lot of swearing coming from management. Opie replied. Love it.